inflation has come down from 34% to 6% in October. So there, there's reasons to be optimistic looking forward. So the National Bank has a lot on its plate. It's done a very good job for the last uh, 25, 30 years. It's developed effectively. It's a strong institution. Uh, how? Uh, how? How do you measure that? Well, but the shocks of the last uh, uh, three, four, and, and, and even if we go back uh, to, the, to that uh, banking crisis of the last 10 years have been significant for Moldova. But Moldova has come through and it's come through uh, effectively uh, in the fourth quarter, certainly. And then going forward, I, I think we'll start to see a recovery. It's hopefully there, there won't be some new shocks around, in particular, the security situation in, in, in Ukraine next door. Uh, but there's good news as well. So the, there was the, uh, the recommendation from the European Commission to, to, to open negotiations with Moldova on, on its candidacy to the EU. And Moldova is a relatively small country, so progress can, can be made uh, quickly. Things have changed uh, uh, remarkably. I am Moldova in my heart, you know. I would like uh, to ask you to make a general picture. Uh, there are challenging times. Uh, the region is uh, facing uh, multiple crises, as um, does the whole world. How do you assess uh, the chances of uh, recovery? Well, I think the chances of recovery are, are starting to become stronger. Uh, I think we've passed the worst uh, part of, of these multiple crises. Uh, Hopefully, there, there won't be some new shocks, but uh, if uh, on, on kind of the baseline or what we expect now, I think we, we see growth in Moldova starting to emerge perhaps in the third quarter uh, of this year, uh, in the fourth quarter certainly, and then going forward, I, I think we'll start to see a recovery. It's complicated. Recovery in, in, in Europe is, also, is slow right now, and particularly in Germany. Uh, Germany has, has, has been a country quite exposed to, to some of the external changes, uh, external developments in China uh, with energy costs. And, and, and after all, Germany is the driver of the European economy. So if when the German economy starts to recover, the European economy will recover strongly and the Moldovan economy in turn will recover strongly as well. There is uncertainty. There are risks around, in particular, the security situation in, in, in Ukraine next door. Uh, but there's good news as well. So the, there was the, uh, the recommendation from the European Commission to, to, to open negotiations with Moldova on, on its candidacy to the EU. Uh, inflation has come down from 34% uh, a peak uh, down to around 6% in October. So there, there's reasons to be optimistic looking forward. Let's continue to talk about uh, Moldova. You, you were uh, the IMF uh, resident representative in Moldova during 1996-1999. Yes. Uh, how do the past and current challenges in the economy differ? Well, that, that, was, that was really a, a, a different time. It was shortly after the, the collapse of the Soviet Union. Uh, Fifteen new countries uh, emerged. Uh, it, it was a difficult transition. People know better than I do. Uh, the, the first few years uh, of, of the 90s were, were really quite, uh, quite a, a difficult, volatile uh, growth, for example, or, or, or I should say GDP uh, in Moldova declined by 50% uh, from 1991 to 1994. Inflation was over 2,000%. Uh, these, these are mind-boggling figures. Uh, for, for an economy to shrink by half, and for inflation to be 2,000%, this shows the, the kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, dislocation, the kind of difficulties that were, were taking place at that time. By the time I came in, in 1996, things had, had, uh, had I, I think, uh, calmed down. Uh, th things were starting to find uh, their own uh, uh, way. Uh, by 1997, th there was growth. The uh, National Bank had, had uh, stabilized the Leo. It was introduced exactly 30 years ago. By 1996, uh, the, the Leo was, was, had settled at, at almost exactly 4.65 per dollar. And, and it stayed that way uh, for some time. Growth in, 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 in 1997 was positive for the first time in, in nearly a decade. Uh, and, and things looked, things looked, uh, started to look good. Unfortunately, in 1998, there was a default by Russia in its, its, uh, uh, on its uh, uh, domestic and foreign debt, and, and that created a, a new a set of shocks. So by, uh, in 1999, uh, uh, the Moldovan economy shrunk again by 8.5%, by and, 
And, and by the time I concluded my assignment here, you know, I, I really had a, a sense of, of uh, concern yeah, that that uh, that the economy was uh, was volatile. Moldova was a small a small country. Uh, its economic prospects, uh, to me, looked looked somewhat questionable. Uh, th those were times of, of wage arrears, pension arrears. Uh, it, it, th these were really difficult times. Uh, we, we've moved way p uh, beyond that. So Moldova still faces a number of challenges. Um, it, it's had shocks. It's had d internal shocks. In, in 2014 was a banking crisis that, that's had a long uh, a subsequent uh, tail, let's say, or a long subsequent history. Um, it, it's had recent shocks from COVID, recent shocks from the war in Ukraine, but the institutions are stronger. Uh, the, the, the basis is stronger. When I was here, the, the, the National Bank of Moldova uh, uh, had only started to accumulate some foreign exchange uh, reserves uh, to, to be able to, to, to provide a buffer uh, for the Moldovan economy. Now it has o over $5 billion uh, uh, dollars worth of, uh, of reserves. So it, it, the, things have changed uh, uh, remarkably. There are challenges. There are challenges in, 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 for the budget. Uh, there, there are challenges to provide uh, enough resources in, in, in key areas, infrastructure, uh, health, education. The challenge is still in the financial sector, deepening it, developing it, uh, making it inclusive for all Moldovans. There continue to be challenges in the business environment, but, but it, these are of a different magnitude, a different order than they were in the 1990s. Even at that time, the, the, the political system was, was also volatile. The, the, the uh, constitution was changed uh, several times in, in, in the 1990s, uh, trying to find the way forward. Uh, many of those questions have been settled and settled for good. Uh, so, so now uh, we can we can really think about uh, what remains and, and and what still needs to be done, but but in a much different uh, context. If I asked you uh, to evaluate the current uh, relationship between Moldova and the um, IMF, uh, what uh, would you say? Well, I, I think relations are excellent, and, and uh, I think uh, probably they're a, a, as strong as, as, they've, as they've been in 30 years. We, we have a big program uh, with uh, uh, Moldova, big financial support program. We've had those in the past. Uh, we, we've had a, a series of programs since uh, probably 1992 or 1993. This one is, 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 is large, uh, and it, it's been... It, it covers a very long period of time, uh, ultimately nearly four years from, from uh, December 2021 until October 2025. That's a, a long period. And, and we're about to uh, propose next week the c conclusion to the board of the IMF of the fourth review of the program. Uh, that, that's a good sign. It means that, that uh, our, our agreement uh, is being met. Uh, we see good ownership. We see good performance. Uh, this program was was uh, made larger, or augmented, as we say, uh, after uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, when when the needs were larger, and and now we're adding a, a second uh, facility. Uh, it's a new facility that the IMF has to support uh, uh, climate change policies, to support energy security, to support green finance. Uh, so Moldova requested uh, a, a, a new program with that facility. It's, it will be 170 million dollars. It's only the second one in Europe, uh, so it's it's a big it's a big deal and a big development. Uh, uh, we have good relations with with the with our counterpart authorities. We're we're grateful for their efforts, uh, we, and, and we strongly support uh, the the policy framework uh, and where it's going. Could you make a comparison between the IMF supported programs over the years in Moldova? Yes, I, I, we've had a series of programs, as I mentioned. They, you know, the fundamental basis of the program is to provide uh, uh, financial support. Uh, so sometimes they were, you know, the needs were acute. Uh, other times uh, the programs were, were longer. Uh, we, we, we have sort of two, two main facilities. One is called a standby arrangement. Uh, and the second one are, are so-called extended arrangements. Uh, standby arrangements tend to be 12, 18 months long and, and really deal with acute uh, uh, financing needs. The extended uh, arrangements, uh, the repayment periods are, are, are somewhat longer, and that allows uh, focus on, on, on more structural or more long-lasting uh, challenges. Uh, 
So w with that in mind, w the programs of the IMF typically focus on similar areas or issues as they go along, uh, making sure fiscal policy is sustainable, making sure that the budget deficit is not too large, that spending is efficient, that, uh, that uh, tax revenues are raised in a way that uh, doesn't uh, hurt the economy. It's, it doesn't put too much of a burden on, on households, on firms. It, it, we aim to make sure that the National Bank has sufficient uh, foreign exchange resources and that monetary policy is effective so it doesn't lead to inflation being too high or too low. Um, we aim to make sure that the financial sector is, is, is working effectively, is, is well managed, is well regulated, is well supervised, and to make sure that the business environment and, and uh, the labor market, uh, that these also work effectively. So most of the programs have focused on, on, on those uh, sets of issues. Um, you, may, you may say, well, are you ever going to solve those, <laughs> solve those problems? Uh, I, I think we, we make uh, progress and we work along the way. There have been a series of shocks that have affected Moldova. So from time to time, it may seem that the programs are, are focusing on the same things, but they, they do change over time. Uh, the program from t uh, 2016 to 2020 really focused on, on the financial sector, uh, which needed to be addressed after the banking crisis in 2014. It focused on cleaning up uh, governance of, of, of banks, uh, strengthening uh, uh, supervision and, and regulation of banks, and, and we think it uh, has been quite successful. Uh, the, the banking sector in Moldova is, is quite different now in, 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 uh, in 2023 than it, it, it was uh, 10 years ago. Uh, how? Uh, how? How do you measure that? Well, uh, it, it's been through a, a really significant shock in the last two or three years. Inflation, higher interest rates, uh, uh, differences in, in, in demand for credit, and it, it's come through that uh, quite resilient. So, uh, so the number of banks is, is now at 11 rather than, than, than 28 uh, uh, before, let's say 15, 20 years ago. Um, so so we, we can see that the, the programs are helping. Um, the current program uh, has been focused on, on helping the authorities ad address spillovers uh, from, from the war in Ukraine. Uh, higher energy prices and the need to, to find ways to target support uh, to households and, and firms that, that need support from high energy prices. Earlier, uh, there, were, there were elements that were still focused on the pandemic and, 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 uh, and, and, and uh, you know, getting past uh, the pandemic period. Uh, now, it, there's, a, there's a need to, to, to come back to the question of growth, uh, your first question, how, how to support uh, a, a recovery of the Moldovan economy and strong growth uh, going forward, and, and now looking at the, these questions around uh, climate uh, adaptation, climate m mitigation, uh, infrastructure investments that are needed, and, and, and the key area of energy security. So, so uh, Moldova, as you know, has, has, has relied on, on energy supplies from, from the east, and, and uh, since the war in Ukraine, uh, uh, this has made uh, that source of supply um, more vulnerable, more risky, so, uh, so an opportunity to turn to, to other sources of supply uh, from the European market. And, and here, the authorities' efforts have been uh, really quite impressive and quite successful uh, to, to, to orient uh, gas and electricity supply uh, in a different direction to 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 make the to protect the uh, Moldovan economy from risk and from vulnerabilities around around energy supply. Talking about IMF support, how does IMF support fit into the general context of donor support? Well, that's a, that's a, an excellent question. I, I think. Um, the IMF uh, programs typically are seen as, as helping to ensure that a country has a good, a sound a macroeconomic policy framework in place. So uh, a, a, a good monetary policy, again, so that inflation is, uh, remains relatively low and stable, uh, that the exchange rate uh, is, is predictable. It may not be fixed, but it, 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 at least uh, uh, firms and, and and the markets know that uh, what the policy is around the exchange rate, it, it, it could move, uh, that, the, that the budget is, is, uh, is at a certain level, so it's not causing uh, pressure, while also uh, expenditures are increasingly efficient, increasingly well-targeted, uh, et cetera. And, and there's a, a component of structural 
uh, and, and reforms for the business uh, environment, for the, for the labor market, uh, for climate increasingly, that, that, uh, that other donors can say we're confident that this country has a good economic policy framework in place, and then we'll come in and, and, and provide additional support. Different donors have different objectives. They have different things they wish to focus on. Some now are focusing on, on social sectors, health and education. Others may be focusing on climate or on, on, uh, on energy. Some may be focusing on roads. Uh, uh, some may be wanting to find ways to support uh, the private sector, small and medium enterprises. If they can be confident that the authorities are managing the economy well, it gives them confidence to provide uh, support. Uh, by the same token, uh, the, the IMF uh, provides financing. Uh, it's, it's not just a program, but, but we provide financial support. But typically, we don't provide the, the total amount, the total envelope. We, we share uh, that with, with other uh, donors or other uh, international financial institutions. So uh, there's some risk mitigation, some risk management there. But it's, it's, it's really that uh, uh, that it, it should be a, a program and a framework that that uh, that has the support of the authorities, but also has the support of of Moldova's uh, international partners. Now, what are the current key objectives for Moldova in the IMF's uh, view? Well, uh, it would be around uh, finding a good balance between continuing to respond to to the the shocks from uh, effectively from the war in Ukraine, high high uh, energy prices, high inflation. Uh, how to respond to that? How to support households and firms, but in a way that's uh, that uh, um, allows inflation to come down over time. So in a way that's uh, uh, contained, while at the same time starting to support growth. So, so the, the objectives there would be keep, keep the, uh, the, the budget deficit at a reasonable level, uh, keep inflation on, on, a, on a downward path, uh, while, while also finding ways to support growth. There, there's some specific areas, uh, the financial sector, uh, continuing to strengthen that. Uh, recently, uh, some a aspects of the financial sector and, and regulation and oversight of the sector were moved from the uh, to the to the national bank, the insurance sector, non-banks. There's a need to to ensure that uh, those sectors develop well. They're they're somewhat underdeveloped in Moldova, the insurance sector and and other parts of the financial sector. That's that's an important goal. A big goal is around. Uh, uh, the, the, the whole set of, of reforms and, and objectives around rule of law, around governance, around uh, control of corruption. Um, this, is, this is an important uh, uh, objective of, of, the, of, of the government to now, led by, led by President Sandu and, and Prime Minister Rechian, to, to really put in place a, a system that controls for corruption, uh, demonstrates a, a strong commitment to rule of law. Why? Uh, in the past, Moldova has been seen as is, is perceived by by Moldovans, by by Moldovan uh, companies, by foreign investors as as a country that that uh, has difficulties with corruption and and and, and rule of law. So, uh, as a, as an international uh, institution, we see a link from uh, perceptions of corruption uh, to, to low growth, uh, to, to to lower living standards, to low investment. Uh, to, to uh, out migration, to brain drain. Uh, so, if you can address uh, governance issues, corruption issues, rule of law issues, that should should uh, allow Moldova to re to have more investment, more more uh, investment by Moldovans, but also more investment uh, from foreign sources, a higher growth, higher living standards, and and a brighter future. So, so this program is focused heavily on those sets of issues. And uh, lastly, uh, uh, th th this question of now climate uh, uh, change and, and energy security. About NBM and the collaboration yes. NBM, what uh, are currently the key tasks for the NBM and uh, the banking and uh, financial system? Well, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. The, the, the National Bank, if, if we go back a year and a half ago, was looking at inflation of 35%. Uh, it's, it's now uh, it, it raised its policy rate uh, quite significantly and, and early. So it, it successfully brought inflation now back to its target range. Uh, 
uh, th that that uh, uh, fight, uh, so to say, that battle is, is never really uh, over. Uh, so uh, inflation could go uh, below the target range. It, it could uh, the, the the Moldovan economy now, as as we've discussed, is 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 has been in a recession the last year and a half. So so it could be that inflation goes too low. So the the national bank needs to keep a, a close eye on that and continue to to manage the interest rate, the reserve requirements. Uh, uh, exchange rate policy in, in a way that 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 uh, that keeps uh, inflation uh, in its in its target range. It also is is the main uh, supervisor and regulator of the financial sector, uh, so it, it needs to continue to keep a close eye on on on, uh, on banks. Uh, as I mentioned uh, before, a lot of progress has been made in the last uh, eight years on on the on the banking sector after the crisis. Uh, now there's a sense that uh, maybe banks are overregulated. That there's a concern that there's too much regulation and too many controls. We don't share that view. Uh, we see that uh, uh, there's a, a, a need to to uh, to maintain a, a, a firm uh, a firm uh, uh, and robust uh, regulatory framework around the banks. Uh, Particularly given the risks that, that are are facing Moldova in terms of growth, in terms of inflation, um, but they'll have to balance a little bit of that as well. So if if you keep regulations and, and keep uh, the management of banks too tight, then they don't provide credit. Uh, then then the economy uh, is, is it doesn't grow as fast as it could. So so that will be also a, a challenge to 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 look at the banking sector and to see how it's developing, see what possibilities there are uh, as well. And then this, this question of taking on new responsibilities from the, from the capital markets uh, authority and, and looking at uh, the, the insurance sector, how, how to ensure its, uh, its uh, uh, strong financial position while developing more, uh, looking at non-banks, uh, credit unions, credit institutions, uh, and, and, and expanding the financial sector. So the National Bank has a lot on its plate. It's done a very good job for the last uh, 25, 30 years. It's developed effectively. It's a strong institution, but it's, its job is never finished. So at, at, at each moment, there's, there's something new to focus on. I want to ask uh, you a conclusion. How do you think uh, IMF uh, assistance uh, to the NBM and uh, other, maybe other uh, institutions has uh, moved things forward uh, over the years? But that's a very good question. The, the national banks uh, got off to a very strong start. It had very good leadership at the beginning, uh, uh, and it, it became an, uh, a, a, an institution that was open, that it, it was data-driven. Uh, it, it, it was an uh, institution that uh, was, was willing to provide data. It had very good uh, uh, staff, it, so it recruited staff on the basis of their qualifications. Uh, and it became a, an institution that was willing to ask questions, uh, to learn, uh, to, to, to learn from, uh, to follow be best international practices. So the National Bank got off to a strong start and, and it's continued to be a, a strong institution. In 30 years, we've, we've had a, a, an enormous amount of, of technical cooperation, of policy cooperation with the National Bank, and it's really a, a capable institution. You may say, how, how do you measure that? And I would point again to the to the work that it's done in the last couple of years in, in responding to this inflation shock decisively and successfully, and earlier over over the the last uh, five or seven years in, in following up to the banking crisis and and strengthening uh, the, the the functioning of, of the banking sector. Uh, it, it's 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 a it's a sound and, and and strong institution, and that's why it can take on additional. Uh, financial areas like insurance or like non-bank uh, institutions. We continue to provide the, the National Bank uh, uh, technical support to policy advice. In, in some ways, it's, it's fine-tuning, but in some ways, it's, it's helping them to take on these new uh, responsibilities and tasks. There's, there, there are a number of other questions like how to regulate digital currencies, how to regulate payment systems, um, uh, new and emerging uh, electronic payment systems. So there's always always some innovation, some development. Uh, uh, crypto uh, currencies or crypto assets are, are another area. There's the whole issue of, of, of financial integrity, money laundering, uh, and, and and how to how to uh, 
uh, ensure that Moldova has a strong uh, framework in place, questions around cybersecurity, hacking uh, for the National Bank itself, for the financial sector. So there, there are a number of challenges. It's a strong institution, but the important thing, it's a learning institution. It's an institution that focuses on best practices. It focuses on uh, recruiting and developing excellent staff. It's it's a it's an institution that's open to, to to technical assistance and technical advice, and and uh, I'm confident it will stay that way. The next uh, question is about the resilience and the sustainability facility yes. RSF. Uh, why is the RSF program important? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked the question. Uh, so th this is a new facility that the IMF has. Uh, our, our managing director, Kristalina Gogieva, she came in and felt that the IMF needed to be more present in in uh, in, in the air and, and responding to the climate challenge. And 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 the board of the IMF and staff agreed. So we put together the 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 uh, RSF uh, uh, facility. Um, it, 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 the aim is that the IMF helps uh, bring. Uh, climate challenges and, and energy sector challenges uh, into the into the macro framework uh, a, a, as strongly as possible. So uh, we can see that that in, in, in the countries that have had RSF programs so far, and in, in Europe it would be Kosovo and now Moldova. It, it, it's useful that it, it it gives the Ministry of Finance a strong seat at the table in, in helping ensure that climate uh, policies are well anchored in the overall macroeconomic framework. So they're not forgotten about, but they, they're not too large either. So uh, uh, that they fit into the budget framework, they fit into the, to the monetary and financial uh, sector framework, and, and that real progress can be made. Uh, from our side, the, 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 uh, the facility offers 20-year financing. Uh, which is very long term for the IMF. Uh, typically, our financing is in the range of of three to seven or eight years. So now we're offering a financing for twenty years. It uh, has a long grace period at the beginning, more than ten years. So, uh, so it's it's really attractive financing uh, for for countries to to use this financing. And the idea is it is it helps countries strengthen their policy frameworks around climate issues and, and around energy security. So uh, in, in Moldova, it will help put in place, for example, a new uh, climate action law uh, that, that will help set the basis uh, for, for Moldova to respond to challenges uh, as, as, uh, like uh, the carbon border adjustment mechanism that will come in place uh, for, uh, in the European Union and affect Moldovan exports to the EU towards the, the need to have in place uh, a uh, emissions trading system in, in Moldova to, to upgrade and, and, uh, and link Moldova's uh, electricity and energy system more, more to the European uh, uh, markets for, for those. Uh, it, it, will, it will help in green finance and setting a, uh, uh, the basis for, for banks to increasingly provide financing that, that's climate uh, positive or climate uh, uh, supportive. Uh, so it, it helps address a number of, of issues. What it, it doesn't do is provide project financing. So uh, you, you, you know, there may be a case to say, well, uh, look, if we, if we hooked up the uh, Moldovan electricity network to the Romanian network with, with a high tension power line, this IMF money's cheap, you know, it's 20 year, 10 year grace period, uh, that would be a great use of it. That's not what it's for. Uh, it, uh, th there are other uh, uh, sources or other, other institutions like the EBRD, the World Bank, KFW, that provide money for, for energy projects or climate related projects. Ours is focused on getting the policies right and getting them situated in, in, the, in the budgetary framework for the country. And uh, what is the role of a uh, central bank in adapting to climate change and mitigated uh, associated risks? Well, that's a great question. Uh, and I think that it's a question that, that's received a lot of attention in the last, uh, let's say, three, four, five years. And, and, and some, some have asked, what, what's the role of the central bank in, in doing this? And, and I think the, the idea is that, uh, you know, the, the financial system uh, and, the, and its assets face a, a lot of risks. 
uh, around, from from climate change. So the, the uh, a key thing is is to ensure that the financial sector uh, appreciates those risks and, and and that it prepares for for materialization of those risks. So if a if a bank is lending to a I don't know, let's say uh, some farmers who are exposed to drought or exposed to to other climate challenges, you know, they need to they need to account for those risks uh, uh, well. Otherwise, uh, they'll they'll affect uh, the the you know the uh, public finances of the country, um, and increasingly to make decisions on the that are that are supportive of of the uh, of the authorities' overall efforts to re- reduce. Uh, greenhouse gas emissions over the next 20 or 30 years. So, so it's, it's important that uh, that policies are, are oriented around that, not only uh, in terms of, let's say, what the uh, Moldovan government is doing in terms of investing in roads or investing in, in irrigation systems or, or water networks, but also what the financial sector is doing uh, in its own operations. So that's, that's a, a strong uh, the, probably the strongest uh, motivation for a central bank as, as a regulator and uh, of, the, of the financial system uh, to make sure that it's, it's, it's climate uh, robust, let's say, that, it's, it, it, that the financial system is taking into account climate change in its decision making and its, its, its provisioning. I uh, want to remember an t- uh, interview given in yes. uh, 1999. Yes. Uh, in that interview, you talked about uh, the lack of uh, national uh, consensus in uh, Moldova. Uh, how do you see things now? Uh, would you have uh, any reasons to congratulate Moldova in this uh, point of view? Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, at, at that time, uh, I think there... Uh, the, the country was under uh, under some stress in 1999. I, I mentioned the Russian uh, financial crisis, which which had a strong impact on Moldova. There were this constant question of of whether we should be leaning east or leaning west, and 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 really kind of how how to how to do that. And it, it was a time that I, I at the end of my term uh, in 1999, I, I felt this this lack of consensus was was uh, affecting. Uh, Affecting policy making, affecting the uh, the, the clarity of, of objectives. Um, I, I think moving ahead now, almost twenty five years, uh, you know, the situation has changed. To, uh, I think considerably. It, it's it's been a question uh, o- over the last uh, two decades or so. Still, uh, you know, w- w- where things are going. Um, I think now, in 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 in, in the history of Moldova. It's probably the clearest it's it's ever been. So the the war uh, uh, and invasion in, uh, of Ukraine, uh, you know, I, I think was a was a, a it's a big historical event, and 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 I think uh, uh, the, the the it seems to me that there's a consensus now that Moldova's place is in Europe, uh, and, and Moldova's path forward is 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 through uh, integration with Europe. That that may take some time. Uh, it, it will take a lot of work, but this is really a historical moment, uh, a, a historical opportunity uh, for for Moldova to join uh, the single market, to join uh, a, a, you know a set of a, a group of about thirty democracies uh, that that have you know placed high principles on 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 uh, on how their uh, how their citizens live, how they. How they, uh, how their societies work. It's it's a really a historic opportunity for Moldova, and it's it's you know, as an outsider who has some history in Moldova, it's really it's 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 a it's a great opportunity. It's a big opportunity, and it, it's good to see that uh, there is consensus and there's a vision that we we need to move that direction and we need to move quickly. Are you impressed? Uh, there are some uh, some things uh, uh, that impressed you most about the way uh, things uh, have developed uh, here re- recently. Uh, I, I think so. I, I think uh, I think the response to the, the the shocks that have hit Moldova in the last three or four years are, are significant. Uh, okay, at the beginning of our discussion, I mentioned from 1991 to 1994. You know, the economy shrunk by 50 percent and inflation was 2,000 percent. I, I mean, that's historic. I, I, that, that's a, 
That's a really mind-boggling shock and, and maybe one that we didn't fully appreciate at the time, uh, uh, its, its overwhelming nature. But the shocks of the last uh, uh, three, four, and, and, and even if we go back uh, to, the, to that uh, banking crisis of the last 10 years have been significant for Moldova. But Moldova's come through and it's come through uh, effectively. Yeah, it's come, it's, uh, I, I think Moldova has, has, and Moldovan institutions have shown that they're capable of, of managing the economy effectively uh, when faced with a pandemic, when faced with, with spillovers from uh, a war next door. Uh, that, that's really impressive. Uh, so so uh, uh, th th there was high inflation. Uh, there there were, were other developments. But, the, but the, I think institutions have proved uh, to be resilient. They've proved to be effective. And, and as I mentioned at the beginning, we may have more shocks, but uh, at least on our baseline, we can start to see growth uh, uh, reemerging, starting to recover. And I think we can see the economy strengthening and moving forward and now a historic opportunity to join uh, and, and further uh, uh, integrate with, with Europe. On the other hand, what do you think would help economic recovery in Moldova? Well, uh, I think it's a good question, and and uh, and and there, uh, I think you can look at this in in, in many different uh, dimensions. There, there, there are issues that, that that you ask me if I'm surprised by some things uh, from from 25 years. Uh, one thing that surprises me is to hear people still complain about uh, about queues at the border. Uh, for example, uh, when I when I was here in 1996, 1997, 1998, if you drove to Yash, well, it took about three hours. You know, it took a long time to cross the border. That's, that's still the case. It, it, and and uh, so uh, addressing uh, very concrete and practical bottlenecks, uh, very pra practical obstacles uh, would, would help with growth. So uh, so if 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 issues like uh, like infrastructure, uh, like the quality of roads, uh, the ability to uh, border crossings, if those can be uh, uh, addressed and, and progress can be made there, well, well that, would, that would be a big boost to growth. Then you can take a step back and, and look at uh, things like uh, uh, implementation of the budget. Usually in Moldova, the, the, the outturn, the outcome of the budget is different than what was planned. And, and usually there's underspending. So, uh, so the, 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 the budget is, is not necessarily a good uh, uh, working as effectively as it could uh, to, to marshal funds to the right place. And, and usually the underspending is in infrastructure, is in, in capital investment. So, so uh, improving the, the execution of the budget um, w w would be pro-growth, uh, would be pro-growth. Uh, I think having a, a strong anchor uh, around European integration and, and, and starting to make progress on that will give, a, will give confidence. People will see it's really going to happen. You know, it, it's really going to happen that we're going to integrate with Europe and we're going to join the single market. And that will, will, will uh, tell people, you know, I better invest. I, be, I, better be, I better be out there first. You know, I better be the guy taking the credit, investing in some new machinery, some new equipment, some new process. Because it, when it happens, I want to be the guy who, who's, who's first in line and benefits from that. So that, I, I think once you start to see progress and it's happening, uh, the, 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 the government uh, and, and the National Bank are preparing well for this process. You have to, to get closer to, to the European standards and requirements in, in a number of areas. Once that process starts to move, I'm, co I'm confident that, uh, that there'll be uh, a, a strong side of confidence among households, among firms, there'll be more investment, there'll be more optimism, and that will be another uh, uh, place for growth. Of course, the, the war in Ukraine continues. Um, there are uncertainties. Uh, some people see that as a, as, a, as a big source of risk. So they've been sitting and waiting, uh, saying, well, let's, let's see how that plays out. Uh, so I think if you can uh, uh, fix problems and obstacles like border crossings, other 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 uh, uh, areas of, of investment that that are needed for specific problems. Improve uh, 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 implementation of the budget, and, and really start to build a dynamic of uh, this is where the country is going, and this is how we're going to get there. Uh, that that will will e even overcome some of the risks and uncertainties around the regional environment. I'm, I'm confident that. Uh, how does the uh, Republic of Moldova stand uh, regionally today? Uh, how uh, does its uh, pro prospects look, perhaps uh, compared to other countries in the region? Well, uh, I, th I think uh, uh, 
Moldova is is uh, is probably has has lost a little bit of, of time and a little bit of, of, of progress that other countries have have made over the last uh, twenty or twenty five years. Um, so I, I think uh, if, if we go back five years ago, I, I, I think it was it was seen as as probably a, a one of the slower moving. Uh, countries that one of it, it, growth was strong, but maybe the the institutions were not uh, 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 relatively uh, as as good as in, in in some of the countries in the region. Some of the results were 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 not as good. I think there's been a lot of catch up in the last few years. So so there's been a real focus on on uh, how to move forward, and I think that the the geopolitical developments, the the war in Ukraine, have have, have has brought. Uh, the international community to to focus on on uh, how to support Moldova, how to how to how to help uh, bring it through this this difficult time, and 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 how to uh, support Moldova in in European integration. So I think that's that's led to 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 some catching up and, and catching up fast. I would also say you know, Moldova is a relatively small country, so so uh, uh, progress can can be made uh, quickly, uh, and, and it can be. Uh, and felt uh, quickly in a, in a small country. It, it, uh, it's a country with uh, two or three million people, an economy of, of uh, 17, 18 billion dollars. So uh, uh, progress is felt very quickly compared to a much larger country or uh, uh, where, where, uh, where these things take more time. So it, this is also a way of encouraging the authorities to, to also move quickly, uh, that, uh, that they can, they can uh, Ch sort of change uh, uh, direction, uh, uh, be nimble, be fast, and, and, and move, uh, move in a, a new direction very quickly. Finally, yeah. Mr. Horton, uh, we, uh, there are um, Blitz interview. Uh, yes. yeah? Uh, yeah. Are you ready? Please. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, what is the IMF? The IMF. Well, it's a it's a, it's a group of 191 countries. We're, we're soon to have our 191 first country that 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 have come together to to support each other and 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 to provide uh, to be in a position to provide financial support to 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 countries that are in in, in need. It's also a country. Uh, it's also an institution that looks at the at the global economy. It looks at regional economies. It looks at individual member country economies. Its surveillance function gives a policy advice on, 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 on what needs to be done. And then it supports it with technical assistance in, 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 in order to, to make sure that that policy advice can be implemented effectively. So it's, it's, a, it's a universal institution, which is, which is great. Uh, we, we have almost every country in the world now. Uh, there, there are a few that, that haven't joined, but uh, so that, that's part of its strength. And then part of its strength is that it really focuses, it has a clear focus on, on, the, on the stability of the global economy and, 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 and member economies and, and their, their, uh, their sustainable development to, to the benefit of the people. So it's, I have to say it's a great place to work with, with that kind of, uh, with that kind of uh, uh, objective and, and, and that, the, those, those uh, uh, focus. Uh, why does the IMF uh, finance the Republic of Moldova? Why? Uh, well, it's uh, Moldova is a member country, so so if it it, it needs financing, if it, it faces financial needs, it, it's uh, it's it's welcome to come to the IMF and and, and request financial support, and and uh, it's not a, uh, it has to undertake certain. Uh, uh, commitments uh, to to receive support. We want to make sure that if, that if there are imbalances, that that uh, policies are taken to correct those imbalances, so that they they're they're not uh, continuing over time. And then it needs to win the support of the 100, 190 countries that are represented at the board of the IMF. So so uh, we, we support the uh, Moldova uh, when it needs uh, money, when it's committed. Uh, and, and 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 takes uh, uh, policy measures to to fix to fix uh, 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 difficulties or challenges that it faces, and when it has the support from from our our, our full membership. One problem: uh, what uh, that uh, the Republic of Moldova must solve. One problem. Well, I, I think many people would say uh, corruption, uh, rule of law, governance. That nexus of problems has been an issue in in Moldova for. 
for for 30 years and and uh, as i mentioned earlier if if progress can be made if that issue can be solved so that that uh, that uh, these issues are, are are lower or or uh, at, a, at a manageable level then the uh, the uh, country can grow faster uh, p uh, people can feel more stable more secure uh, and people uh, will, will the the the, the out migration of people would, would become less uh, it would be a more uh, a more integrated uh, country with 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 Europe and, and and with the global economy. So that that would probably be the number one thing to focus on is 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 getting getting the economy more transparent, more functioning, uh, better, and and with better uh, rule of law, uh, more control of corruption, and and better governance. Uh, we uh, we uh, used to, uh, to give uh, some practical advice in this uh, section. Yes. Um, what uh, message do you have, um, what advice do you have for the young people who are willing um, to and able to invest? Well, uh, they, uh, I, 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 they have to make their own decisions. It's, it's their capital, that, but uh, uh, I think they, they need to... Uh, to be convinced that the that the, the the country has a good policy framework in place and it has a good set of objectives and if they're convinced of that uh, and, and they're convinced the country is going in the right direction they can feel it they can see it then uh, of course they should uh, they, they should invest uh, i think the great opportunities in, in moldova uh, and uh, and their their opportunities to be taken so if if uh, if if the economy is is is, is functioning well if if the policy framework is good and the objectives are clear, somebody's going to invest in Moldova, and it may as well be smart young Moldovans. Uh, in uh, what should one invest? That's a good question. Uh, I think things that will benefit from from this increasing integration with the single market. So things that are around, you know, what products, what services, what uh, goods can be produced in Moldova that that are will will find. A strong demand at the right price in the single market and in the global economy, and 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 some, you know, some folks invested in in wineries uh, 25 or 30 years ago, and and they they made a very good investment. They 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 it, it was a, a you know not like uh, uh, picking money up off the ground. Uh, they they had to invest in their, their vineyards. They had to invest in their technology and their and their uh, um, the way of of growing and producing wine. But 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 now they're benefiting. Uh, Moldovan wine is 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 now uh, globally recognized as excellent uh, as an excellent product. So I think it gives a it gives a template. This is something that the the world likes. Uh, it's something that demands. The resources are here. Uh, so uh, finding finding another product, another good, another service that uh, that that can find its place in the single market in Europe and find its place globally would, would be the way to go. How about cash? Does cash have a future? Not with me. <laughs> I, I'm carrying around cash. I never, I never use it. You know, uh, but uh, of course it has a future. Um, but I, I think increasingly uh, less so. So I think it's 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 convenient to use electronic uh, payments. It's it, it's it's quick. It's uh, it's efficient. It's uh, it's clear. It's transparent. Uh, cash will always uh, always be around. It's it's kind of nice to have some cash, and but uh, uh, but I think it, it it's its role will in, will become uh, smaller and smaller. It's not clear whether digital currencies are, are are in the future. I know a lot of central banks are exploring that uh, uh, as a way to go, but I think uh, the the position of cash will will uh, will be increasingly limited. And of course, uh, cash is used in in in, in some. Um, you know criminality and 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 the, so it, it provides anonymity. It provides some convenience from time to time, which is good. Uh, but it also can can be used in in in, in ways that uh, uh, you know are, are are less positive and and and, and more more prone to to uh, criminality. What uh, important develop uh, developments uh, do you anticipate in the financial sector? In, in Moldova, maybe not. Uh, maybe in uh, in the world. Well, uh, I think the the financial sector is is has shown uh, globally through through COVID and, and the run up infla of inflation that it's it's resilient. Uh, that uh, that uh, you know we we've come through 
uh, globally uh, two major shocks in the last uh, three or four years without another financial crisis. We, we had some banks uh, uh, that, that didn't make it, banks in, in Switzerland, banks in the United States. But in general, the, the financial uh, system has, has proven to be robust. This is a very good news. Uh, the, the, I think there were, if we look back 10 or 15 years ago, there were, you know, uh, uh, times when, when the financial sector went into crisis and then it brought the global economy uh, uh, down. It, it, it cost a lot of money for taxpayers. Uh, it, 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 so uh, it's a good thing that we're, we're past that. It, uh, I think it will still be important for, for, uh, for banks and, and the financial sector in general to, to continue to, to find ways to provide its services at, at, at low costs, uh, uh, to, to, to anticipate new uh, demands, new, new requirements, new services, and to provide those effectively. Uh, you mentioned financial inclusion at the very beginning. This is what I have in mind, that, uh, that uh, banks are quite profitable right now. Uh, so it, uh, the, they'll need to find ways to, to provide, ensure that, uh, that, the, that they provide good services to, to the maximum number of people, including people who, who have been underserved. Uh, uh, historically, uh, some some groups, some segments of the population who ha who have not had access, uh, uh, and and of course the rise of digital uh, payment systems, the digital uh, platforms that needs to be managed effectively. Um, so, uh, uh, products like insurance or, or pensions or or uh, uh, in some countries uh, access to to credit for housing. Uh, for other uh, other major life purchases, uh, there's there's still a lot of work to do, and all, all this while while continuing to be stable and 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 not uh, you know not imposing costs on on the, on, on on countries or on on taxpayers. And last questions. I'm, what? I'm not, I'm not being very blitzy in my <laughs> responses. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll, I'll no problem. No quicker. problem. Uh, what are your immediate uh, expectations for the region's economy? Well, the, the uh, European economy is, is has has been gone through a, a, again a series of shocks with with COVID, uh, with with the, with the run up of inflation. Uh, it, it it's not functioning where it, it, it should be yet. We had good news today uh, that uh, that uh, inflation in Europe in November was was lower than expected. It's, it was two point four percent, so it's it's getting close to its its target, which I think gives hope that. Uh, that interest rates could could uh, start to come down uh, sometime and 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 support uh, recovery. So uh, I, I think in the near term, um, I mentioned earlier that the, the German economy ha has has been struggling uh, somewhat. Some of that is due to high energy prices. Some of it is due to China and and, and slowing in China. Some of it uh, over a more longer term will be to to move away from the German economy is really good at producing cars. Uh, and, and and now that electric vehicles are starting to emerge, whether it will will be competitive there will be a big question for Germany, and because of that, a big question for Europe. But I think the we, we I hope we've seen the worst of of, of those crises. You know, uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, the 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 energy uh, price shock, and and uh, and and the slowing in in, in China, uh, and, and that that we start to see some improvement. Some. Some countries have high debts. Uh, some low-income countries, some emerging market economies, even even large and, and wealthy countries. So the United States uh, has has had a big increase in debt and, and also has a high uh, deficit right now. That's a source of concern for some. Um, and and countries like Italy and, and France and, and uh, in, in the in the uh, in the European Union, um, of course, if. Uh, if if there are negative developments in terms of of geopolitics, uh, this this can can cause another shock and and another concern that's emerged in the last few years is this whole question of what we call geoeconomic fragmentation. So the idea that well though there start to be different blocks in the world, uh, maybe one is, uh, around China, perhaps China and Russia, perhaps China and Russia and and and, and other countries. Uh, then, then you'll have another block, and maybe in Europe, another block uh, around the United States and Canada, and that those th th there'll be uh, less trading with each other, less supply to each other, le less interaction. Uh, that that will bring higher costs uh, as as uh, as the as, econ as the global economy becomes less efficient. Um, 
you know, this may be driven by geopolitics. So if, if uh, we, we've seen that in the last few years, uh, uh, different relations between the West and China, uh, and it's, it, it started uh, with some geofragmentation. If that continues, that, that will be uh, uh, weighing on the, uh, on the global economy. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.